Hello everyone, Coin Metallurgist here. I hope you're all doing well today. This is the first part of a two-part video that I want to make for you today. The intent I have in this video is discussing the manufacturing process for US coins and also the Mint Made Airs. Now a Mint Made Air is an air in a coin made by the mint during the minting process. It's not something that happens to the coin after it's manufactured. It's part of, it happens while it's being made. Now, all the materials that are used to produce US coins are purchased from commercial manufacturers. The United States Mint nowadays obtains the one cent coin blanks already produced from a vendor, whereas the other blanks they produce themselves. The one cent coin that's produced now is a copper plated zinc. The five cent coin is a homogeneous alloy that's 75% copper and 25% nickel. Sorry. The dime, the 10 cent coin, the quarter, the 25 cent coin, and the half dollar coin that are produced currently at the US Mint are clad coins. So that means that they took multiple strips of metal and they bonded those strips of metal together while rolling them to the proper thickness. The composition of those coins on the outside or on the face is the same as, as the five cent coin, 75% copper and 25% nickel. The core of those coins is pure copper. And you can see that on the edge of the coins often when it shows through. So the coin strips or the, the, the strips of metal that are the right composition for the coins is fed through a high speed automatic press, which cuts coin blanks, which are also known as planchets. So what I want to discuss here is a couple of the air types that are associated with the production of the planchets. Now, by no means am I going to discuss all of the different errors that can occur in the minting process. I'm only going to be discussing some that I think are more common air types and kind of just highlighting some errors that can occur. There's many different errors that can happen in the minting process. So I have here two planchets. Um, they're both for one cent coins in the US. This one is a 1982 or earlier planchet that's 3.1 grams and it's a pure alloy, 95% copper, 5% zinc. This is a zinc planchet, the ones that are used nowadays that is plated in, plated in very thin copper. They're 2.5 grams. This one right here, I consider a mint to air because this coin was supposed to be uh, striked and receive the design of a one cent coin. This one here, I don't consider an air. This one was never intended to be stru struck. Um, the way I received that one was I went on a tour at the United States Mint in Denver. And as part of the tour, they give you kind of a souvenir with a one cent coin from the year and a blank planchet. Now these are the blank planchets that the United States Mint is buying from the vendor and is being provided to them. So I don't call this a mint air because it was never intended to be struck into a coin. What I view as the most common and most prevalent air that we see in the planchet preparation process is a clipped planchet. So a misfeed can occur when the metal strip is fed through the plant blanking machine and the punches sometimes overlap the leading edge of the metal which could produce a straight clip. But generally what you see is a curved clip, which happens when the, the plant, the punches strike an area of overlap with the, with the hole that is left by a previous strike. And I have an example of that here. Um, this is a one cent coin from 1967. And this one actually is a double die clip. And so it was clipped twice by um, a 
blanking machine. Now, generally, they do have one clip. Um, it's not that uncommon for them to have two. These airs aren't all that rare. Um, they're somewhat unique because they're not all going to be identical. Um, but you can usually pick one up for less than $10. I got this one for eight. I've seen many of them for $5 or less, especially the one cent Lincoln coins because they make so many of them. Now, something about this air type is I don't expect to see clipped planchet airs in future coins as much. The process is, is better than it used to be. And now that the planchets are being purchased from a vendor rather than the U.S. Mint being producing them themselves for the one cent coins, that is, not for the other denominations, I expect there to be a couple extra steps there in validating that there aren't clipped planchets. So that's the first piece of this video I want to make. Um, in the second part of this video, I'm going to discuss die errors and also striking errors. And I'm going to show you a few different examples. Now, I talked about clipped planchets. That's not the only error that can occur in the planchet preparation. But that's what I view as the most common error. There's also things like improper thickness of the planchets. For example, if the plant, if the metal that was rolled to the thickness for a dime was accidentally cut into quarter size planchets, that planchet would be the incorrect thickness because a dime and a, nick and a quarter have different thicknesses. Or there's things like lamination errors or cladding er flaws but I'm not going to get into that um, in detail in this video. But I hope this was a useful video to you that gave you a little bit of background that you didn't have already or just reiterated something you already knew. Please uh, like, comment, and subscribe if you, would, if you have anything to say. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a great day.